Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for being here today. Um, the March 22nd, 2023 special meeting in person and video conference in the, for the Agora Hill City Council. Um, welcome to the Agora Hill City Council goal setting workshop. This meeting is being conducted in person in the council chambers and also by utilizing video conferencing. Please silence all cell phones and other electronic devices and do not access Zoom during the live meeting as it will cause interference with the audio visual, visual system in the council chambers. Tonight's meeting may be viewed on Zoom via the link on the agenda by live stream on YouTube by entering Agora Hills City Council meeting in your browser and clicking on the link for March 22, 2023, or view the live or archived meeting on the city's website at agorahillcity.org and click on the Watch Meetings Online button. Pursuant to Government Code Section 54953B, Mayor Chris Anstead will be attending this City Council Goal Setting Workshop via teleconferencing from the Hilton, Hilton Orlando Business Office, 6001 Destination Parkway, Orlando, Florida, 32819. This teleconference location is accessible to the public and will be open to the public for attendance at this meeting. I'm now going to defer to our city clerk, Kimberly Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Buckley Weber. Public comments are limited to the discussion item on tonight's agenda. Any person in the council chambers who wishes to speak or submit a written comment is requested to complete a public comment card for each item and submit to the city clerk prior to the public comment portion of the item. Comments submitted at the meeting will be provided to the city council for review and filed with the official record. For any person participating remotely, written public comments were requested to be emailed by 2 p.m. today and distributed to the City Council in advance of the meeting. To request to speak during public comment, please click on the raise hand button on the Zoom toolbar. Request to speak must be received prior to the Mayor Pro Tem closing the public comment portion of the item. Public testimony for all speakers is limited to three minutes per speaker. Written public comments will not be read aloud by the City Clerk. For full details, please refer to the public participation section on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm now going to call this meeting to order, and I will ask Council Member Penny Sylvester to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Now, uh, Ms. Rodriguez, will you please take a roll call for us? Good afternoon. Council Member Lopez? Here. Council Member Sylvester? Here. Council Member Wolf? Here. Mayor Anstead? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Buckley Weber? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Buckley Weber, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. Um, and now I'm looking for a motion and a second to approve the agenda for this afternoon. I'll make a motion to approve tonight's agenda. This is Deborah Klein Lopez. Council Member Wolf, and I will second. Thank you, and I'll defer to Ms. Rodriguez for a roll call vote. Council Member Lopez? Aye. Council Member Sylvester? Aye. Council Member Wolf? Aye. Mayor Anstead? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Buckley Weber? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Buckley Weber, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, this section, uh, we're now moving on to public comments, and this section is reserved for public comments relating to the goal setting workshop. Written public comments were requested to be emailed in advance of tonight's meeting. If you wish to speak, please click the raise hand button on the Zoom toolbar now. Public testimony is limited to three minutes per speaker, and a speaker's time may not be transferred to another speaker. Ms. Rod Rodriguez, do we have any public comments for today? We received three written public comments in advance that were distributed. They were from Old Agura, from Jess Thomas, George Coleman, and I apologize, I have this in front of me. <laughs> Here, I can look it up. Is it Phil Ramuno? Phil Ramuno. Phil Ramuno. Thank you so much. Yes. And we do not have any written speaker cards for in the chamber, but I'll defer to staff. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Buckley Weber. No hands are raised to speak on this item. Thank you. 
Um, our next item is a discussion of City Council's short and long-term goals, and I'll now defer to our City Manager, Nathan Hamburger, for the staff presentation. Thank you, Mayor, for Tim Buckleweber. This evening, um, we are going to get started on our next two-year budget cycle, which is very exciting. Um, and so I'm just going to briefly go over um, the workshop itinerary, and then um, our Director of Finance, uh, Ms. Trulson, and myself will provide an update of our goals and some things to pay attention to as we move forward in this process. So uh, the itinerary this, this afternoon is um, to take the, our first step in establishing the city's goals and priorities over the next two fiscal years. And as we go through this, um, I'm going to have our Finance Director, Christy Trulson, provide a general overview of the budget and things like to be aware of, but we're also going to, as we go through the goals that have been provided to me by the City Council, um, I'm going to go through those uh, via subcommittee, how we have those assigned, and I will pause at that point as we go through those to allow you to provide questions, comments, any feedback, any direction that you want us to, to take at that point, and then we'll move on to the next. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Ms. Trulson to uh, take the next few items for us. So, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council, staff has started working on the two-year budget. They began in January on the 2023-24 and 24-25, and it's beginning to take shape. Budget requests have been input. Meetings have been held with Nate to begin reviewing those requests, but it's still pretty early in the process. There's a lot of numbers still being researched and estimates are still coming in from uh, different sources. We have attended a few economic forecasts and the forecast remains stable with a slight increase. It, the two economists that I listened to had um, positive outlooks for the future, just not as much growth as we saw in the last year. So in the next few slides, I'll prepare you with the parameters. We are, I'll review with the parameters we're using for revenue expectations and expenditures. Wanted you to know that the city receives both general revenues, which can be used on a broad use of items throughout the city, and special restricted revenues. Those <coughs> special revenues are, have examples such as Measure W, Measure R. Uh, during the preparation of the budget, Staff reviews the restricted money for use first and then moves over to use the general fund money that can be used more broadly. So on our revenue slide here, we have that the city relies on three main revenue sources to support that general fund. Those three revenue sources, sales, property, and transient occupancy taxes, will be reviewed in more detail tonight at the city council meeting. But for now, I'll give you a little spoiler alert. Sales tax is holding steady. There was a large increase last year as we recovered from the pandemic, but it's forecasted to be pretty flat this year. Uh, property taxes are increasing slightly, and that's due to the large turnover of many properties the last few years. And TOT is holding steady, hoping for the return of more business travel. Uh, but staff has a, included a new revenue source this year, transient occupancy tax to be collected from short-term rentals. And as interest rates have risen and the city has increased its reserve, interest income is finally making a small comeback. So interest income will help to grow our general fund and to create a little more money for the city's use. Another way the city is able to increase and do more is to apply for grants. The city uses its reserves to build up, to save for a project, and then spend on that project, and then it requests reimbursement from the granting agency. As an example, the city still has outstanding requests for the Agora Road widening project. Uh, but this is one of the reasons why the city has to have those healthy reserve levels. <coughs> and something I wanted to point out for this year is the state has authorized income taxes to be paid late this year due to the impacts of the winter storms. The deadline has been changed from the usual April deadline to October, and while the city does not directly receive this as a revenue source, the impacts of the state are unknown, and staff will continue to monitor any impacts that could flow back to the city where they target another revenue because they're a little short on cash sometimes. 
Um, it goes without saying, staff is working to explore every grant opportunity avail available and will continue to pursue available funds. And next I'll go over a few things that are shaping our expenditures. So the Los Angeles County Sheriff has requested an increase of 7.63%, uh, which is approximately $550,000. Uh, sheriff costs are projected to be 25% of this year's general fund budget, though it's a little early to tell this year, I'm sorry, being the 22-23 budget, but with the increase, it would be 29% of the preliminary 23-24 budget. So those costs are growing faster than our revenue cost estimate costs are growing. Um, a new crossing guard position is being requested. Restroom and sidewalks are scheduled to be renovated at Chumash Park, and these funds were set aside in our Capital Improvements Fund and our CDBG Special Fund. A fee study will be requested to review the cost the city charges for services such as permits, licenses, and rentals. And these studies take place approximately every five years and ensure that the city is recovering all its fees, costs when it charges things to citizens. And to comply with state and federal regulations, there are numerous studies and updates that are being proposed. And all of these items will be discussed in more detail when the budget is put together and presented to the council in early June. And after this, I'm gonna turn it over to Nathan Hamburger, unless anybody has any questions. Debbie. Yes, council member Lopez. Just one question, do you know where the crossing guard request, what school? I believe it's at uh, Willow Elementary, and, and it's a change in, there used to be able to have one crossing guard uh, deal with multiple crossings, mm -hmm. and now that they've reviewed the uh, traffic safety flow and everything, they, they've asked that that be two rather than one guard. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Council members, I, us. I was just curious, I know they've delayed the state property tax, I mean the state income tax returns, what about the property tax that's due in April? Is there going to be a delay in that because of all the weather conditions we've been undergoing? Council Member Sylvester, I have not heard of any delays in the property tax being offered. Thank you. But we will continue to monitor it because that is something as more and more storms come in that they could announce. Any other questions? Council Member Wolf? Is the 7.63 uh, increase just for Lost Hills, or is it countywide? I'll let Mr. Hamburger answer that one. That is countywide. So all of the contract agencies who utilize the sheriff as their uh, public safety agency are receiving the same increase. If there's no other questions, then we'll just move on to the next part of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Trulson. So the next slide is just a reminder that um, last year the, the council set up a facilities reserve and the, the reason we're bringing it up is we'll start to have expenditures in that as we um, repair things at our, our, all of our facilities, particularly the Civic Center and our Recreation and Event Center. And I just want to uh, highlight that as just something that's going to be up and just a reminder that we'll have those expenditures showing up in the next to your budget. Um, and it's not to ignore any other funds that we have or any, you know, that we're utilizing. Um, but this is just that reminder. So, um, so we'll advance on and we can start uh, with the goals now. So I'm going to start with our land use economic development uh, subcommittee. Um, the goals that uh, have already been established and completed is our short-term rental ordinance. Uh, the goals that will be completed by this fiscal year and underway are the sign and lighting ordinance and the oak tree fee reduction consideration that's being worked on and uh, should be presented to the council, um, in, I believe, in the next 60 days. So. We'll go on to the next. And so there's a couple goals that are gonna carry over into the next fiscal year. Um, the outdoor operations permit, um, although we are working on that and there is an item on the council agenda this evening, um, there's just some parking adjustments that we're going to propose. And um, in order to do that and not negatively impact uh, certain uh, commercial entities as they exist today, we had to just, just tweak the parking a little bit. So we'll be bringing that back to you, but that work is underway. Um, the Agora Village Pacific Plan update is underway as well, and uh, sometime in the near, very near future, we'll have a draft to the Citizens Advisory Group. The Land Use Economic Development uh, Subcommittee will review that again. 
And then as a reminder, we do need to go back to the Planning Commission before we come back to the City Council for the final review. Um, our affordable housing uh, planning and public outreach. Um, so we are reaching a point with our successor agency that there are some expenditures that we do need to incur. Um, you're allowed to, to keep a certain amount of reserves um, up to a million dollars and we are, are getting close to that threshold. So we'll have um, further discussions of how we can at least start some of that process and, and, and have meetings with the public. Our historical preservation ordinance, which is uh, currently underway, we've completed the survey for that. Um, they are currently uh, looking at uh, trees and other uh, landscaping that would be um, considered historical. And so we're waiting for that final report and then we'll start moving with that item. And then the oak tree ordinance, um, when we added additional tree species that required some additional studies through um, our arborist. And uh, once we receive that report from him, we'll continue moving forward with that as well. Any questions on this before I move to the proposed goals? Um, I did have a question. Um, you said that you're already working on the sign and lighting ordinance. Are those two different ordinances? Or are you talking about lighting of signs? It's the lighting of signs. That That's what I thought. Thank you. Council Member Lopez. Quick question, just because I know we have um, some residents here interested in the oak tree ordinance. You've, we're, we're, because the oak tree ordinance is taking a little longer than we thought, because it was in our last budget, you're, we're pulling out the fee, um, the fee issue to address this fiscal year and we'll address everything else next year. They're, they're two separate discussions. You're correct, yes. Okay, just want to clarify that the fees will be discussed this year. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? You can go on, Mr. Hamm. Okay, so we advance um, to the proposed goals. So we have a goal of consider outdoor lighting ordinance or a dark skies ordinance, uh, review commercial cannabis, and um, that, that goal was provided to me as a, uh, to do something similar along a white paper to provide different options and um, any impacts or um, you know, positive benefits that may come of that. The next is to review penalties for the removal of protected tree species, then consider an anti-camping ordinance, and then create drought tolerant landscape plans. And uh, the meaning behind this one is um, to have plans that could be easily utilized by any residential property without having to pay for a landscape architect, very similar to what you've seen with our uh, accessory dwelling units program that we're doing. So I'm gonna pause here, take, um, provide any clarification, get any comments, feedback, or questions that the council may have for this subcommittee. Council Member Lopez. Just procedurally remind me, um, I've been through this I think twice now, this maybe is my third time, so just procedurally, all of these items are just, they're going to subcommittee and we will delve into the pros and cons later and come back this is really just to present to us a summary of what we've all come up with. We're not discussing any of these right now. Is that correct? Correct, unless there's something that the majority of the council would not like to see move forward. Okay. Short of that, yes, every, all the details will be fleshed out in the subcommittee. Okay, thank you. And I should add that at the end, um, if there's something that you've forgotten to put on the list, you, you'll have an opportunity to let us know or add it. Council Member Wolf. Um, I think the city manager addressed this already, but uh, with the review penalties for removal of protected tree species, it, so we added, or this looking to add species to the list, or I'm just, just could you articulate that? Yeah, so the, the, the goal as it was presented was to review the, the penalty structure for when, um, for example, like if an oak tree were, were over trimmed or cut down, are damaged um, w without the proper permits and permission to, to have a uh, structured approach of how we deal with that. Okay, great. So it's not like adding new species to that list. It's the, the, stru uh, the penalty structure. Understood. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mayor uh, Anstead, I see you're up on the screen. Did you have a question? Yes, thank you very much. I just wanted to ask the city manager concerning the cannabis provision. Is that something that we're mandated to review or is that something that you've been asked to add? I, I, I wasn't sure on the explanation. So all of the proposed goals um, are something that's been provided by one of the members of the city council. 
Um, at this point, we are not required by uh, law to, to review that. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that clarification. If there's no further questions, we'll move on. Okay, so we'll go back um, and move on, advance to our next subcommittee, which is the environmental sustainability. And we have completed our full electrification ordinance, which was adopted by the council. Um, we have our electric vehicle charging stations. We're able to get grant funds. Uh, and as you see those out front, so we're very happy to have those in place now. And we'll have our ribbon cutting coming up soon. Uh, rains kind of pushed that back. Uh, but we still are working very hard in our climate action adaptation implementation plan. Um, as you may recall, we had a, uh, a group called Civic Spark that provided us an intern. Um, we did provide an update just recently on um, those implement implementation measures, and we'll finish those up by the end of this fiscal year. And then um, the solar panels and battery backup at our recreation event center. Uh, we're very proud to be partnering with the, with the Clean Power Alliance. I actually just had a walk through the other day, um, and they are on their second round of selecting a contractor to do the install at all of the facilities that they're looking at. So we're excited to have that. We'll move to the next slide. And these are the proposed goals for the upcoming two-year budget cycle. Uh, that is to replace non-native trees, uh, particularly consider Chesbro Road adjacent to Old Agora Park, and look for more tree planting opportunities. Um, and this is, is kind of in line with our climate action and a adaptation plan. Uh, the second is to expand our organics recycling education to encourage compliance. And the final request is to consider an ordinance to ban gas leaf blowers. And again, I will pause here for any feedback or questions from the council. Well, I, I, I could have sworn that a council member wanted something about a ban on styrofoam and plasticware. <laughs> Don't know who it was, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that somebody did. <laughs> I think you did, and I don't see that on there, so I will make sure that gets <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I apologize about that. I've only been asking for it for 11 years, but that's okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Are we ready to move on? Okay. All right, we will move to our public works uh, subcommittee. Uh, we took a look and reviewed the uh, speeds on our major thoroughfares and were able to address that. Um, we are in the process of enhancing our bike facilities and that will be with the repair racks this year and that um, has gone through the subcommittee to, to take initial look at it. We'll be back to bring that to them and then to the council. Um, the signage, uh, the Agora sign uh, that's adjacent to the US 101, we are working with the property owner. Um, they do have a requirement to maintain that sign so we're working with them to try to get that back up in place. Um, I wanna just touch on the next item, the Liberty Canyon improvements. So that originally was, um, to extend the Los Angeles County water quality project um, that came from some residents. Um, we were able to work with Los Angeles County Public Works Department. Uh, they were willing to extend their uh, proposed nice. projects thus underway. So um, the funds then will be utilized for some beautification improvements. And we have been meeting with the HOA um, on different items with that. And so we'll bring that back to the subcommittee uh, fairly soon. We just met with them in the last uh, week or so. On the, um, the next two items, the, um, if we could go back one slide, on the Hawk uh, Flashing Lights Crosswalk. So we did apply for a grant fund. We just got notified uh, on the last day that we did not receive those funds. Mm. Um, what, we, what we possibly can do, and, and we can talk more at a, at a future council meeting if it's something you'd like to bring back, uh, we can design those and we can still apply for um, grant funds for the construction. And um, we haven't had a chance to find out why our applications were rejected, but we can we will work on that. We literally just got that information um, before this meeting. So um, I know our public works director has had tried to put together a cost estimate um, to do both of those designs. And I think we can do those within the allotted budget, but we can, if, if the council so desires, we can bring that, that item back. Question, council member Lopez. I just one one thing about the the hawk um, signals and the crosswalk. So that was on our budget request two years ago, and you know it's it's really unfortunate that it takes that long to find out whether you know we get the funding or not from grants, and that at the end we didn't get it. So 
I guess my request would be just some options for that. Obviously, we need to find a way to get reimbursed for that if, if there's out there, but this is something that the public has been asking for for, for years, um, particularly at the um, Reyes Adobe crossing. And so I guess if we could just have some options, even if it's something that we can upgrade later, that's, I guess, what, what I would be requesting in, in, in a time frame that, you know, we can report back to our residents that we can prioritize it. Thank you. Uh, can I just follow up? You said which Reyes Adobe, they're both Reyes Adobe crossings, so which one do you think is the priority? Sorry, I meant the, the Reyes Adobe. So we, we have a lot of people crossing the, um, the, the street rain, at, rain, at Rainbow Crest. Rain, right. Um, yeah, Reyes Adobe refers to a bunch of things. Sorry Thank about you. that. Any other questions or comments? Take it away. Okay. <laughs> we'll jump back into it, and I, and I will bring that item back to the council uh, fairly quickly to get that resolved. Okay, so the goals that we'll be working on, we just talked about the, the Hawk signal, so just found out that information. Um, the next is a linear park construction. Uh, we do have uh, the funding secured for that. We're very excited. We are just uh, working out some final details with Los Angeles County uh, Flood Control District, and uh, we anticipate uh, having some kind of groundbreaking, hopefully this summer. Uh, early summer is our goal, um, so we'll have a lot more information coming up on that very soon, but I'm very excited about that. So we have a little bit longer list here of proposed goals for our next two budget year cycle. Uh, continued bikeway improvements uh, with requests to utilize uh, as, as much of, in many grant funds as we possibly can uh, to modify the access to the pedestrian bridge over the US 101 and that specifically was re requested to address the ADA issue uh, of those ramps and potentially that uh, the bicycles could get up over that as well. Uh, the next is to change out the light poles on the Reyes Adobe Bridge uh, to make those something um, that people feel, would, I guess, fit better in the community and the look of that. And then the next is to seek funding for a sound wall along Agora Road. The next is to clean the creek behind Lindero uh, Country Club. And then the next is to uh, do a study, look at naturalizing our creeks and waterways and what would be the areas that is most viable and financially feasible, um, but to present all of that information to the council uh, within the next year, uh, similar to like a white paper for that. And so again, I'll, I will pause um, and take any comments or questions. Council members, any questions, comments? Mayor, do you have anything to add? Yes, actually, if the, I would add, I guess, the comments that came in from Old Agora concerning the cleaning of the creek there. I don't know if we want to add that uh, on or, or whether we can or should we address it in the subcommittee. I can address that. So if, yeah. if it's something that the council would like to add to the goals, it, it is appropriate to do that this evening uh, so that we can start working on a work plan if that's something that the majority of the council would desire to do. Would you like me to take a vote on that now? Sure, that'll be fine. If um, Council members, how do you feel? Any comments about having the subcommittee look into the cleaning of the creek behind the Old Agora homes, pursuant to Jess Thomas and Phil and Old Agora's comments today? So um, I'll start off. I'm, I'm very supportive of that. Um, I, I, I do understand, though, that's jurisdictionally a challenge, it being not in the city of Agora Hills, a lot of that. So I do want to go into it with eyes wide open. But it is something I do support, and I would uh, absolutely vote yes. And that's to look into it. To look into, into the possibility of cleaning out the creeks uh, right. throughout Old Agora. Thank you. Council Member Lopez? Um, I love this meeting because we get to, like, I want it all. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is the meeting where I can say, yes, I want it all. And then, you know, Christy puts numbers to it. And then we have to come back and decide what, what we don't want. But right now, there's just, there's no, there's no downside to looking into it. We'd love to, you know, see how that plays into our, our budgetary process, again, with the, with the understanding of what Councilmember Wolf is, is throwing out there. So no downside. Let's, let's look into Thank it. Thank you. Councilmember Sylvester? I agree with my fellow council members. 
But there's another creek that I'd also like us to look into, <laughs> and that's the one that runs through Morrison Ranch as well, because there's a, that's a fire hazard. I was okay. going to bring that up later this evening with the fire department, but I think okay. we should look at all our creeks. All our creeks, I would be for that. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Mayor Anstead, what's your thoughts on it? I, I agree with the, all creeks. I also am aware of the Morrison, or the the creek going through Morrison being contested, so I think that's a good idea to take a look at how much that would cost. Okay, and I also agree that um, it's an important thing to look at about cleaning up the creeks um, and, and what that's going to take and what that entails, particularly if we're going to be looking at naturalizing other creeks or port parts of the creeks. We need to know um, what the most efficient way to do that so that the maintenance problems, you know, won't arise in the future. So um, do you need any other information from us, Mr. Hamburger? No, that's very clear. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you. We can ad advance to uh, the next subcommittee. Communications. So we did not have any goals for this current year in communications, uh, but the proposed goals are to review our software, our technology, and consider alternatives for our public meetings and communications. Um, I think part of this is that we're, we're in a new world, as everybody's aware, and um, Zoom that we use, um, we, we make it work, but we're, we need to determine whether that's the best technology or if there's a better programming out there for our public meetings and transparency reasons. So that's uh, what's behind that goal. The website infrastructure upgrades is the next one. And the final is to consider additional paid social media ads to increase our followers and viewership. And again, I will pause uh, for your feedback and questions. Any questions from anybody? All right, I have none. Mayor Anstead? No questions. Okay, great. We'll just move on then. Thank you. I feel like this is too easy. I don't know. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is the best meeting. This is the one. Next meeting's not going to be this easy. <laughs> no, I know. I know. <laughs> so we are going to move on to community services. So um, we completed our 40th anniversary uh, events and program. Um, we have already begun the organic products at a park. Uh, our test is at Old Agora Park. And I know um, Amy will be bringing back uh, some updates to you very soon on that. And then the uh, goals we'll carry over, I want to touch on a little bit our Morrison Park play equipment replacement. As you will recall, uh, there was a group of residents and they are working uh, with the Rotary Club at Westlake Village and uh, they're raising funds. They're just short of about 100,000 they've raised. Um, we've done some research on grants. We've um, we found one, and actually, uh, I was notified of one. I even told Amy that, that I got today. So we're gonna we're gonna apply for those. We're gonna go after them. I do want to make you aware there is a match for these these grant funds. Um, so we will probably need uh, some private investment, and we'll bring back to the council what that will be. I don't know an amount just yet. It really depends. I think I believe it's a 25%. Miss Brink, if 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 you recall, but. Um, I think it's a 25% match that we'll have to have. So um, we will be bringing that. That application is due in June of this year. Uh, next is the uh, Chumash Park restroom. Um, I know actually multiple departments have been working on this to get all the utilities worked out and the, the placing and uh, working around all the trees that are out there and uh, the concrete. So uh, we, we have those designs getting finalized. Uh, we will be out for our first public meeting uh, in the uh, first week of April, and we'll have some more information on that coming up. And then um, we're hoping that uh, we'll complete that summer fall when we get the uh, the restroom equipment delivered and get those sidewalks completed. And uh, the next one is the Agora Hills Calabasas Community Center. And just as a reminder, the city was awarded uh, an earmark grant that is now through the Housing and Urban Development uh, for a million dollars. And uh, we have uh, signed that agreement, and we're just waiting for environmental clearance. Um, and so as soon as we get that, we'll go. And then I, we don't have an exact schedule just yet, uh, but we'll be uh, bringing that back to the council for updates uh, in the near future as well. So I will move to our proposed goals for the next two years uh, to look at our dial ride program, uh, provide detailed analysis on the efficiency of the program and consider options and alternatives. And I'll probably bring back a report uh, sometime early in the next fiscal year. 
to expedite the Morrison Park play equipment, uh, purchase and installation. And although I just talked about this, it was one of the goals that was provided, so I just put it up there um, as well. If we don't receive grant funds, it is something that we can consider. Um, we'd have to look at how that funding plays out. Uh, the next is to explore additional outdoor recreation facility opportunities, uh, tennis courts, pools, et cetera. Uh, next would be a survey study of our, uh, the basketball court should be converted, converted to a full court, and currently those are, most of those are half court for play, but we've had a request to look at um, whether a full court would be appropriate at uh, one or multiple parks. And the final is to consider funding for a uh, historian to archive our historical documents, photos, and um, I know we've, we've received uh, some proposals from the outside. What we'd really need to define is what we want the historian to actually do on our behalf. Um, once we define that, then we would do an RFP uh, for that to, to find the most appropriate either consultant or contractor to assist. Um, so I will pause here and uh, take any feedback and uh, questions that you may have. Any questions? Council Member Lopez? Um, not a question, but just a comment because I'm not on the community services subcommittee this year, so it's my, just my moment to say something before it goes into further discussion. I just want to um, uh, ask and remind about the Chumash Park rest, restroom uh, renovation as we carry it over into the next fiscal year that um, I would really like to see, and I believe that council has agreed that we need gender neutral options, mm -hmm. particularly at Chumash Park, where we have a great number of visitors for our concerts in the park. So if you wouldn't mind taking that into the discussions in the committee, I would appreciate it. Thank you. And, and could I also answer that? So actually, that is included in our design already. Um, mm -hmm. um, and we appreciate you bringing that to our attention as we, as we look at that. But um, we have included that. So Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, we can move on to the next category. Okay. As we advance into the law enforcement, fire, and emergency response, um, we have installed and the safety cameras are up and running, uh, also known as the flock cameras or license plate readers. Um, and those are currently being utilized by our sheriff's department. Um, and we'll have a report back on that uh, fairly soon from the sheriff's department as well on some of the success stories they've had. Um, and then the proposed goals for the next two years are to look at our CERT funding and expand that for training and additional storage of supplies. And just to highlight the storage of supplies is um, something that our CERT group is looking at in that making sure that we have supplies on both sides of the freeway and have uh, proper storage for that in kind of a multi-year plan. And so um, we have met with them and, and got some feedback on that. And the next is to commit some funding to expand the use of technology for public safety. Um, I know this goal was brought on and, and it's something that um, Captain C2 um, you know, has really tried to look into. Um, I think I've shared with the council that I, I visited along with the other city managers in our COG, uh, the Beverly Hills uh, model they have. And um, they are utilizing drones and cameras um, in ways to help them um, so that they don't have to necessarily always have feet on the ground or boots on the ground. And, um, and so Captain C2 has an idea of, of utilizing that and uh, making that so that, as you can see, our heard earlier, our sheriff's costs have increased. So, so adding services may not be an option, even if we could get deputies, which they haven't even gone through all their training programs and the academies at this point. Um, and so we need to look at alternatives. And so that is something that all of our COG is looking at. Um, and, and Captain C2, I got to give her a lot of credit for, for taking the lead on that. With that, I'll, uh, I'll pause again for feedback and questions. Uh, Council Member Wolf. Yeah, um, one item that I, I hadn't brought up previously, but I was just thinking about that's getting a lot of attention is a cybersecurity assessment to see where the city is to deal with ransomware attacks. I don't quite know how to articulate what that would look like if that's a study, um, but and I don't know if I should pose it to my fellow council members if that's something that we should look into or if you could tell me if it's something that the city has discussed. Um, if I could turn to Ms. Trulson, she has uh, worked on our um, information technology network and, and we could probably address some of that. Um, Councilmember Wolf, that is something that we did probably about three years ago and we did really well on it, but it is a good idea to include it in the next year's budget or recommend a study 
uh, there's been a lot of conversation through CJPAA. I know there's a lot of resources we could look into if that's something that the council wanted to include as an idea. Council Member Lopez. Um, I would just ask the uh, law enforcement subcommittee, the, I think the drones topic is gonna cause a lot of public concern in terms of privacy and noise. Those are the two things that I would worry about. So if in the subcommittee when you're sussing all this out, you can give us some details on how it still um, doesn't impede in, in our quality of life in our backyards, <laughs> things like that. Um, I know that that would be um, something I would bring up at the you know later in discussion. Thank you. And I'm, I'm assuming that that's going to be done because it'll be almost like, um, I would assume we're gonna get a breakdown of what it would cost and what it would entail for each one of those security measures. Is that right? Correct, I think what, what we're working on is if, if we move forward with it, um, we come back with the collective approach and we can see if, if everybody is agreeable to all of that and then whether we see grant funds or whether each city kind of pays for that, um, that portion of it. So we will, and we'll look at all of those. I appreciate you sharing those okay, comments. Okay, thank you. And I would only add to that with several of these, you know, enforcement is a big issue on some of these items that we're going through. And I'm assuming the city will come back with um, how would we enforce various things? Yes, that would be part of the. Thank you. Council member um, Sylvester. I just wanted to make sure I agree with council member Wolf for the update on the cybersecurity. So we have added that, correct? We, it, let's take a vote. Is everybody up for adding a cybersecurity study? I guess it would be an add-on to the one that was done three years ago. I, I'm in favor. Why not? I was just going to, if I could, just a clarification. Sorry. So we, what we could do is just say, rather than bringing you back, to, we could actually do the, the cybersecurity review if that's something that the council would like to do and, and update the study rather than and so we can identify all of the issues with that um, and how we would address those. Is, I just want to make sure. Right. And so you'd bring back your, you would do the study and then bring back to the budget what can be done in cybersecurity or what kind of measures. Exactly. I just want to make sure that's, that was your goal. And that is my, absolutely my goal. Sorry, Council Member. Sure. No, 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 that's the fine. And then the other thing I just wanted to add about the drones there may be certain areas of Agora, only certain areas of Agora that the drones would be implemented. And so maybe those are the areas like we'd go to the HOA. I mean, I know like up in Morrison, because they back up onto the green belt, that's vulnerable, whereas other areas are not. So maybe that's also something we can bring to the HOAs to, if, it's, if the city feels it's not the city's responsibility everywhere to have a drone, then maybe the HOAs can get that information, hopefully. That gets a little sticky, <laughs> in my opinion, but bring it on and yes. we can look at everything. Well, I think we need to look at everything. Yes, I mean, I don't know some that. some neighborhoods are more vulnerable right. than others. Because we do have a drone policy in place. Yes. And so we wouldn't want to then give the HOAs the right to violate our drone policies but because we, they're an HOA. But we can work in conjunction yeah, with Yeah, we can we'll, look at that. Well, sure, yes. I, I just want, just for clarification, it, there is a license that's required, um, and it's it's got to go through some pretty extensive training, and um, it's not an easy license to get, as Mr. Deva can probably attest to. Um, he, he he was originally looking into it for to be our city representative. Um, it's even got stricter since then, so um, it's not something that just any average person could could actually do. Okay. And if Great. I can add on onto that, when, when you do come back with the findings, um, if, if the council does, um, you know, decide to, to give it some review, I would maybe incorporate some kind of public outreach, a workshop or something, because I could see, you never, maybe Old Agora, they, they would never want a drone over their horses, you know what I mean? So I think if we did go further with that, um, we would need some kind of public workshop to make sure that our residents are okay with it. Absolutely. And the only other thing I would add is it's my understanding that Assembly Member Jackie Irwin has some cybersecurity bills that we, you'll throw that into the mix? Great, thank you. Okay, well, uh, we'll go back to uh, the final couple slides here. 
So now that we have the feedback uh, from the council, looks like the, the goals that we have are moving forward. Um, and we've got a couple others that we'll, we'll add to our list and start working on. Uh, we'll start working through the subcommittees. We'll uh, review that and then take recommendations and we'll bring those back um, at the May 10th uh, goal setting workshop. And that will be where we sit, uh, finalize all the goals and have dollar figures attached to those. Uh, and then we will come back for our budget workshop on June 14th, where we will um, also be reviewing our community outreach grants. I know that's everybody's favorite every year. It's always fun. Uh, but, but at that point, we'll have a, a lot better numbers to provide you. And then we can kind of dive a little bit more into the weeds at that point to, to review each department and, and the, uh, our capital improvement projects list. And then we will bring back to the city council um, our request to adopt the budget at your meeting of June 28th. And so um, with that, if there's any final questions before we head off, I just want to, just before I take those, I really want to applaud all of our staff, uh, Ms. Trulson and our finance staff. I know they didn't have to answer a lot of questions today, but everybody over there works uh, a lot of hours and put a lot of effort into it. And I just want to thank them for all of that. Um, and our staff in, in, the, uh, in the audience as well um, had to sit through all these budget workshops and meetings with, with myself and Ms. Trulson. I know it's never fun, but um, <laughs> we're, we're getting there and we're getting a document put together. So, so with that, I'll turn it back to you, Mayor, for the envelope over. Thank you, Mr. Hamburger, and I just want to remind the public that our subcommittee meetings are open to the public, so if anybody wants to watch this process go through or has comments, don't hesitate to come get involved. And there was something else on the, oh, um, and I know that it's our habit um, and our custom that we send all of our past grant applicants the new application for this year, so they'll be getting that, but we do want to make sure that we have a, plenty of PR and social media so that new grant um, applicants have plenty of time because that's kind of a cumbersome process as well. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from anybody? Council Member Lopez? Just want to echo the big, big thanks. I disagree with you, City Manager Hamburger. It, this is fun. <laughs> and I think Chris, uh, Ms. Trulson would agree. This is good stuff. Um, but no, like I said, this, this is, um, I always say the budget is, is our moral, uh, it's kind of our moral statements of what we prioritize. And I know how much goes into even getting a skeleton together. And I, I know what a long process this is. So I just want to say thank you to everyone. Any other comments? I would just second all the thanks everybody has given to staff. <laughs> I give all the thanks right now to Michelle for <laughs> trying to organize the subcommittee meetings. <laughs> That's a nightmare. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I do see someone in the audience that I think intended to speak but came a little late and missed the public comment period. Not a problem. We'd love to hear from you. So why don't you come up? You probably, you can fill in a card later. This is Joan Yacovone from Liberty Canyon. Thank you. I'm sorry I missed it. I was down at the... Uh, if you could approach Kimberly to give those, she'll take care of it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very sorry I missed the official time. Um, Not a problem. Just make sure you bring the mic a little closer to you. They're, they're pretty manipulative. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, I came to talk on the uh, Liberty Canyon improvements. Um, we were sent a letter in December by Mr. Fisher uh, about the a budget item that is included for the Liberty Canyon improvements. And we scheduled a meeting with Mr. Fisher. And it seems like there's an echo. Is that, uh, is that better? Does everybody, do all members of the council have their mics turned off? Anyway, um, so we did have a meeting with Mr. Fisher and Jessica Forte uh, in Liberty Canyon on, I believe it was fe uh, February 22nd, um, to respond to, and then they sent us a, a letter in rebuttal, and it's all in your packets there, the, the letter, and then um, Mr. Fisher's response as to what could actually be done. Um, we, our first suggestion was on the last page of your packet is the picture of uh, the Country Glen sign that's currently in the median on Liberty Canyon. 
It's literally two tenths, almost two and a, almost a quarter of a mile from the actual street intersection. So um, we were hoping that maybe we could change that to say welcome to Liberty Canyon. Then there's a rendering there as to what it could possibly look like. It, I don't even think it has to be a budget item. Liberty Canyon homeowners are willing to pay for it. Um, it would just be a matter of unscrewing the metal plate that says Country Glen and screwing on a different plate. And we would be happy to pay if you give us the name of the company that you work with. We could call them or work somehow through them or get something made just that would replace that. Um, it's really important. We have four different homeowners associations in Liberty Canyon. And we, are, we do not have any um, common area at all associated with our association. So it's the only place really that would be feasible to put something like that. Uh, as you know, Liberty Canyon has a pretty strong identification. We have a very active group, on, especially on the 4th of July. Other than that, not so much. Um, but um, the other suggestions that Mr. Fisher suggested, um, the uh, bench on Liberty Canyon, we really didn't feel that was necessary. It would, there's a very small area where the bench was proposed to be. It backs up, would be right back against the wall on the back side of the bench and the front side would be right at the sidewalk. It, there's not a reason to have a bench there. Um, so we you know, would say that that would not be a necessary improvement at all. We also have two of the, what they call them, mutt, mutt stations already in the canyons, on, the, on Liberty Canyon there. So we didn't feel we really needed another one that would save some of the money from not having to be spent. As far as improvements to the landscaping in the median, of course, we'd always welcome that. Um, as far as painting the utility boxes, uh, right now, of utility boxes, we don't wouldn't necessarily want to have them all brown. Um, you know, anything less dark would be to our to to, to our, that we, that was what the the group that was kind of the committee. Um, felt that they didn't care whether they were the dark brown or not. Um, other than that, um, again, we don't feel that the, the sign that we would propose would have to be a budget item because we would be willing to pay for it. And we thank everybody and we thank Mr. Fisher for his outreach and um, hope that maybe you can reconsider our, our sign proposal. Thank you, and I just have a quick question sure. for you. So are you, would you then are you looking for another sign for Country, country Glen Road? I don't think or how would we identify that Country Glen Road was I think there's rotating. a street sign down there already. I'm not sure. But, if, but it's the only street there, and it's, you know, it's, there's signs along all, all the intersections and everything. Thank you. We don't need an identification sign for it. It's actually quite confusing to people because it's so far removed from the street itself. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any comments? Well, thank you for coming today. We appreciate hearing from thank you. Thank you, and I know it's, it's some, not something that uh, has been done before, but um, we're kind of unique. We're stuck on the other side of the freeway away from everybody else, and we'd really appreciate it if it can be considered. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments for the city manager or for anyone? All right, thank you. Then are there... Um, I don't think we need a formal motion for anything, Ms. Rodriguez, um, unless you want us to have one, but we kind of did them piecemeal. Thank you. Um, am I hearing something from you? No, 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 <laughs> from, from you, no, we're good? All right, good. Uh, let's see then, why don't we move on to, um, are there any comments from our staff? Besides, don't make, we, you don't want us to make your lives miserable? <laughs> then if there's no comments from staff, how about from the city council? Anybody else have any other comments? Well, because I've given so I, I tried not to. Um, <laughs> this is my first budget workshop, and it's been a great experience, and I appreciate the, the city team uh, guiding us through this and presenting this, and uh, appreciate my fellow council members for a really interesting conversation. It, um, um, makes me very excited to be on the council when, when discussing these issues. So thank you. Thank you. Any others? 
Well, you should have seen how we used to do it. <laughs> and that's why we can't believe it's only five to five. <laughs> um, I hope everybody got an opportunity to voice their uh, comments and opinions, and I thank the members of the public for coming in today. And so with that, we will adjourn to the regular city council meeting at 6 p.m. tonight on Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023. And can I get a motion and a second to adjourn, and please state your name. Council member moves to adjourn. I'll second. Deborah Klein Lopez. And I will defer to the city clerk for a roll call vote on that. Aye. 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 Thank you, and this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>